Cool. Hi guys, my name's Emmanuel, and I'm here with some of my real friends right here, and I'm about to ask them a few questions. So my first question I got for you is, what are your thoughts on Jesus' ministry in the sanctuary? Any of you got an answer? <laughs> are you sure? Oh, that's weird. Maybe we'll start a little lighter. What's your favorite tree? Um, Smarties. <laughs> Ella, what's your favorite tree? Lollipop and Smarties. Oh, nice. Ryan, what's your favorite treat? Smarties. Cooper, what's your favorite treat? Smarties. Y'all Yo, all like Smarties? Yeah. That's crazy. What's your favorite food? Popcorn. Popcorn? Ella, what's your favorite food? Uh, Lollipop. Lollipop? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Pancakes. Right. Pancakes. You're like twins for real. All right, now this is a big question. Who do you like better, mommy or daddy? Mm, mommy. Uh, mommy. I don't know which one. I'll just say mommy for now. Alright. What are you? Uh, well. <laughs> Both? Yeah. I want mommy and daddy. <laughs> mm, you, gotta, you gotta pick one though. Mommy. Ah, uh, I do. What are you? Daddy. Daddy? Shout out to the boys. So you see these two? Yeah. Everyone see these two? Yeah. And then you see this guy? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, maybe start the one. Yeah. This guy right here? That looks funny. You know him? <laughs> I've seen him lots of times. You've seen him before? Lots of times. So now i got a question. Out of those three pastors, which pastor dresses the best? So uh, you want to answer first? Um, Josh. Pastor Josh? <laughs> Ella, you want to answer? Which pasta do you think has the best dressing? Aubrey? Oh, okay. What about you? Josh. Josh? Josh. You didn't even look at the photos for real. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. sure it's Josh? Yeah. 100%? Yeah. 200%? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Which one has the best moustache? <laughs> <laughs> of course it's Martin. Of course. <laughs> Biggest one <laughs> and, and the biggest one. And the biggest one. And my daddy. Your daddy? <laughs> People are going to ask you this a lot, but what do you want to be when you grow up? Astronaut. Astronaut? What do you want to be when you grow a up? A police. <laughs> a police? A car inventor. You want to invent cars? Yeah. Cars that can fly and made out of gold. What? <laughs> Like, gold is just silver colouring in with yellow and then it makes all nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right too. Yeah! I, I, I did chemistry in year 12, so I know. What is your favourite thing about church? They have a playground. What's your favourite thing about church? Cooper! Aww. <laughs> Cooper, what's your favourite thing about church? Lion. Aww. So you love each other? Yeah. So I wish we lived in the same house. What's something you want all adults to know about church? Oh! <laughs> to be kind. Oh yeah! Thank you so much guys. High five. Thank you for so, much, so much for the interview. I can't wait to be here on the sermon. <laughs> How awesome was that? We love our church kids, hey. Um, what a blessing they are. Um, if you have uh, just joined us, uh, this morning is the youth service and we've framed it with this language, church kids, right? What is a church kid? What do you think of when you think of church kids? And our hosts uh, challenged us already this morning that uh, whether we are young, old, whether we grew up in the church or we came to um, faith as an adult, we're all church kids because we're all children of Christ. And this morning, uh, we have a little panel for you. And uh, I'm joined this morning by some of our young people. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to ask them a few questions because uh, today our kingdom uh, value that we're looking at is the value of involvement. 
involvement. And so we've got a few topics that we're going to go through. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to uh, invite Mia to share with us. Uh, but we have a quick video because Mia is going to share around uh, involvement in your personal faith. Too many of us are deceived into thinking that children will be saved just because they hang around God's house and God's people. Just because they are familiar with the ways of Christianity doesn't make them a Christian. Not because I inherited my dad's love of food, I will inherit his relationship with God too. I am proud to share that I am of the age where my parents give me the responsibility for my own devotion in the morning. We meet as a family for our devotion in the evening, but it's now our responsibility as children to seek God for ourselves in the morning. Don't you think you could make it up when mom asks, did you do your devotion today? You know what the next question will be. What did you do? I know that my parents will never stop agonizing to God on my behalf, but at the same time, I am not too little to find God for myself. I cannot depend on my parents' spirituality to get me to heaven. Children, you are not too little to find God for yourselves. You are not too young to get to know the God of your parents. This is how you keep your lamps burning. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. Hmm. So Mia, something very exciting happened last week. You got baptised. Woohoo! Amazing. And uh, this morning, we just want to ask you, take a moment and ask you, what is it that caused you to take ownership of your own faith? Uh, so thank you for inviting me to speak, Pastor Aubrey. Um, in terms of the reason why I decided to take ownership of my faith, I just felt it was the right time in my spiritual journey to make this commitment. Uh, I mentioned in my testimony last week that I have grown up in the Adventist church for my whole life, but my journey to Christ was not always as smooth as I hoped it would be. And um, I often had difficulties connecting with God. Um, and I think part of that was the... Part of the reason for that was because I struggled with the notion that Sabbath was a day of rest, um, especially since Saturdays were um, at one point nearly as busy as my, my, my week. Um, it wasn't until I took a step back and really refocused on my relationship with God um, and really took that into my own hands that, um, that I finally felt ready to be baptised. Um, in my journey, one of the um, Bible verses that I read and really stuck with me was from uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And it says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Um, especially now, since our lives are so busy and fast paced, um, this verse really reinforced to me that the Sabbath is a place where I can just surrender myself to God and find guaranteed rest through him. Amazing. So, Mia, how has being involved in church helped shape your relationship with God? Okay. Um, so, if I could boil down probably the most important part of serving um, at, at church in one word, um, for me, it's definitely balance. Um, for as long as I can remember, church has always been ex inextricably linked with volunteering. Um, for as long as I can remember, my family and I have been volunteering at church. Um, at our previous church, we were always the first people to arrive at church in the morning. We'd set up music. Um, my first real volunteering experience at church was playing bass guitar, um, and I would play it every week, nearly. Um, and despite volunteering often, I was not growing spiritually. And my relationship with God um, honestly became less positive. Uh, church and everything associated with it became a chore, uh, a task which I had to complete every week. I was burnt out and church no, was no longer the environment where I could worship and honour God. 
and I knew that was, wasn't the relationship I wanted. Um, it was unsustainable, and deep down, I knew that if I continued down that path, uh, I probably wouldn't be at church today. Um, it's highly likely that I wouldn't even be baptised. So it was only until I was able to experience a new environment and rebalance my involvement that I was really able to refocus my relationship with Christ. Uh, with a new perspective and a fresh start, I was able to strengthen my relationship with God and volunteer on my own terms and through myself instead of, as the video said, um, seeing God through um, your parents because that's, I think, what I was struggling with a lot of the time. Um, and I can say with confidence that I love volunteering at Kellyville Church. I love being able to volunteer in different aspects and learn from these experiences. Without volunteering, I wouldn't know how to play bass. Um, I would not know how to use ProPresenter and I wouldn't know how to use social media um, as a form of evangelism. Serving at church um, oh yeah, so if anything, I have learnt that a healthy balance is always needed when serving at church. Serving is such an important and very, is so important and it's very spiritually fulfilling. And But you need to remember that just even if you're serving, it is still a rest day for you. Um, and everyone deserves a day of rest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mia. Uh, in a moment, we're going to hear from Jagan on the topic of involvement in church. And uh, just before we do that, we have a scripture reading. All right, and take it away. First Corinthians chapter three, verse five to eleven. After all, who is Apollos? Oh, okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Already I've stuffed this up. I'm sorry. Apo is it Apollos? How do we pronounce this? I'll wing it. Apollos True. is saying it. After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believed the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For well, we are both God's workers, and you are God's field. You are God's building. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid which is jesus christ great amazing jagan we're doing this whole theme on church kids and, you know, we're thinking about those kids that we've watched grow up um, and be in the church for years, but that hasn't been your experience. So tell us a little bit about what your experience has been um, being involved with church as an adult. Um, yeah, so uh, in complete contrast, I uh, didn't grow up in the church um, at all. Um, yeah, my family, um, yeah, don't don't really go to church or um, anything like that. So, um, yeah, it was just all the uh, teachings from mum um, to be a good person and all that kind of stuff. And then I was really, really encouraged by uh, my best friend, who's also now uh, my best man at my wedding coming up. So he he was the one that just planted the seed and really um, encouraged me to come to church. And um, I just saw through him and growing up and hanging out, it um, really just changed his life going to church. Um, so I saw the change that God was making in his life and um, really connected with that. And by going to church, just um, found uh, for myself a sense of um, peace with um, yeah, everything that was going on in my head at the time. So that was really good. And then um, further with uh, my fiance also really encouraging me um, to come and to uh, build our relationship and uh, our relationship with God as well. Um, 
So, yeah. Awesome. So, my last question for you is, is life better being involved in a church community and why? Yeah, it sure is. It's um, a lot better, more peaceful. um, And my train of thought. Um, Yeah, it's a lot better because I'm in a lot of different sort of communities. So, like, there's a gym community, uh, friends, um, yeah, just a lot of different groups. And, yeah, the church community group is the only one that I find most peace and the ability to be able to be most vulnerable um, and just grow together and feel... um, connected with everyone and anyone from, yeah, the grandmas all the way down to the kids. Um, So, and yeah, we're all just here for one purpose and for God and for Jesus. Um, And I do have one, uh, a verse um, in Ecclesiastes 4, uh, 9 to 12. It basically says that two are better than one for when one falls, the others will help lift him or her up. So, yeah. Awesome. Love that. Um, Liam, we're going to hear from you in a moment. Um, But we have uh, your MCG, I believe, uh, reading us our scripture reading for uh, involvement in the faith of friends. Mark 2, verses 1 to 5. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door, while he was preaching God's word to them. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Sweet. Easy, my... Amen. Because of, because of their faith, your sins are forgiven. These friends came to Jesus, received healing, received salvation... Be- this man did because of what his friends had did, had done. And um, we just saw, Liam, uh, your MCG, the MCG that you lead on a Wednesday night. And uh, my question for you is, how do you introduce Jesus to your friends? Or how do you introduce your faith to your friends? Yeah, I think, like, even kind of what Jagan was kind of talking about, I think the best way is, like, personal experience because that's so, like, unique and no one can take that away from you. Um, And yeah, sharing how your faith has like positively impacted your life is just like the best kind of ministry because it's so honest and it doesn't come across in a way that's like, oh, I'm trying to convert you. It's like, this is actually like true for me and you can't really take that away. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, What does it mean for you, uh, especially, you know, as you've led this MCG for what, four years or something now? Nearly, yeah. Um, What does it mean for you to uh, support and to walk alongside um, these other people in your life and to play a part in their faith journey? Um, I think the biggest thing, like, it's just being friends. Like, it's not just solely like a spiritual relationship where we, you know, like our MCG group gets together on a Wednesday, but outside of that, we're all friends. Like we're here at church, we're interacting. It's not just like a spiritual journey. Um, So yeah, just being able to like um, be present in a person's life more than just like in a spiritual way is just so much more genuine. And then when it comes to like those, those times in like your spiritual life, it's just it's just so much better because you actually have a genuine relationship with someone. So, yeah. Yeah. Love that. Uh, And just for reference, because I realise I've said it like four times now and didn't explain it, MCG is Midweek Connect Group. Uh, So we have a number of Midweek Connect Groups that happen uh, here in the youth, the young adults, as well as in our Switch group. Um, And so, yeah, that's what uh, Liam has been part of. Uh, Mon, we're going to hear from you next on this idea of involvement in the generation to come. And we have a scripture reading from our Switch Kids. Welcome to 
switch. We are doing the scripture reading Psalms 145, verse 4 to 6. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will, will proclaim your great deeds. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. One generation speaks to another of your mighty acts. Um, love that. Mon, what was it like to have parents that served in church? Uh, it was busy, with a lot of work. We spent a lot of time at church. Um, I think there's a few from my generation, because as Aubrey said, I'm the old one. How am I the old one? How rude. <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time at church. Mum and Dad, when I was growing up, were involved in a whole heap of different things, worship team, um, kids. Dad was making a church magazine. Some of you might remember FYI, and he would print those out, and there would be child labour in our house on Friday nights folding these FYIs that you all got to read um, on Saturdays. We made memory verse cards, all sorts of stuff. We were all roped into it and did it together. I think at the time I didn't realise how important that was for shaping what I would be like today. Um, but yeah, we got to see all the fun and behind the scenes of what it takes to make church happen because you don't just walk in the doors and then church is here all of a sudden and this is just, oh, magically happened. Um, the fairies are here <laughs> all throughout the week and Friday night and early Saturday morning setting things up and preparing service expos and all sorts of stuff and we got to be a part of that which was really cool. Um, how did seeing that example impact your desire to serve? Um, I think it's um, it made me it's not so much a desire like I've never felt like it's this huge big want of course I want to serve but it's just been a non-negotiable like it felt like this thing that oh what are we doing on the weekend well I'm going to church and I'm going to help with whatever if I'm not rostered onto something then I'm going to go and help stack up the chairs when we were at Spurway Drive and you know pick up the rubbish that you see on the floor and it was just I think seeing the way that mum and dad lived out live love serve they were doing it well before we talked about it here um, made me see, like dad would walk around with Tim Tams or Ch Chucky Bickies at the end of church at Spurway Drive. I don't know if anybody from back in the day remembers that, but just seeing the way that he would do that or the way that mum would try and find a spot for a kid at church and just say, hey, come and sit with me or here, do you want some coloured pencils? All that stuff kind of shaped how I see service today. They served through some hard seasons. Like mum and dad, they're not perfect. Um, I love them but no <laughs> does what a lot of mums when they see my mum at playgroup they're like oh sans your mum how lucky are you and I am so lucky um but you know they're not perfect and they had to serve through some not very perfect seasons either like they had some really good times and they've also had seen some really hard times in church and I think that seeing them continuously serve like they've been steadfast in that no matter what has shaped that non-negotiable for me like it's part of our family DNA that you know regardless of what we're going through through, we still show up and serve and, and I find joy in that even though it can be um, chaotic sometimes and it can be a little bit unbalanced sometimes for sure, especially if anyone saw me with Will this morning, it was crazy. He has so much energy and there is just coming to church with a toddler who is insane and is wild, but um, it's, yeah, there's joy in it. And I want him to find that too. I want him to be here when he's going a bit crazy. So he knows he can be 18 and feeling a little bit crazy and he's still welcome here. Um, and I want that for them for sure. Love that. So how did watching the generations, not even just your parents, but the generations before you be involved, shape how you wanted, shape how you wanted to raise your kids? Um, I wanted, like I grew up with, like I didn't know any difference between Daniel and Jess Marsden. I thought they were my cousins. They're not my cousins at all. We are no blood relations. But I was pretty sure that they were my cousins and that Uncle Wayne and Auntie Julie were my uncle and auntie. Um, and I want that for my kids. I want them to be church kids through and through. I want them to know that this is a place where they are loved and welcome and that they know the names of the people around them, that they can say, oh yeah, I know Dulce, I know Pat, I know 
Ken and Wendy and all these people who are here at church, that they know that Pastor Martin is the guy with the moustache. They know that Aubrey is the best dressed, of course. That they know um, these things about the people around them. And that's why I want to be at church week in, week out. Because if I'm not, they won't know them. Um, They'll show up and they'll just be strangers. And I don't want you guys to be strangers. I want my kids to be able to see you at the shops and be like, I know that person from church. And to feel like they can come up and ask you for an extra serving of ice cream at buffet lunch and all that stuff. I want them to feel that. Because I don't know where their life journey is going to take them. I don't know, like my faith is not their faith. And I hope that that's what's going to be their journey, that they will be church kids forever. But I don't know that that's going to be the path that they take. But I hope that we're Wherever they go, they can find their home back at church. Of course I was going to cry. Dang it. Love it. This morning, the call was simple. We just want to encourage you, whatever capacity God may be calling you right now, to just be involved. Whether it's in church, whether it's in the generation to come, Stop crying, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> whether it's in your own personal faith, maybe that's a step that you need to take. Or whether it's in the faith of your friends. I don't know what, what it is for you, but we are, we at Kellyville are trying our hardest to just be true to the calling that God has placed on us individually and as a church. And so if you'd just like to bow your heads with me, we just want to pray this blessing over you. Lord, this morning... Um, and we just pray that we can lay down our pride, um, humble ourselves before you and ask that you would come in and you would rid anything that says, that voice that says, we're too good to serve. We don't have enough time to serve. And that I can't be involved because this is not my home. Lord, whatever it is that holds us back from being involved in this journey that you have us on. Lord, we pray that you would come in and you would just rid us of that today. And we pray a blessing over our church that we would not sit by idly, but we would be a people that are willing to heed the call that you have placed on our lives to be involved, to be involved with the friends around us, to be involved in our church family, the church of Jesus Christ that is on this earth. And God, we just ask for your blessing and your strength as we, as we humbly follow this. And we pray this in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I hope we're going well. I'm here to address the elephant in the room. I am the best dressed. So get wrecked, Aubrey. Not nah, joking. I want to share a Bible verse with you and just a couple of thoughts on that Bible verse. And the Bible verse is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 16. And in this Bible passage, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the church and he says, he being Jesus, Jesus has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The first thing that I love about this this verse is that it speaks to the part of our salvation experience that we often don't talk about. Yes, Jesus has saved us, Jesus has redeemed us, he's allowed us to experience the peace and the forgiveness of God, but that doesn't stop there. It actually goes on, and as the Apostle Paul shares, that part of the salvation experience is for us to realize that we as Christians have been given gifts by God to use. And not only that, the apostle says that um, as each part, meaning each one of us, as each one of us does our own special work that God has gifted us to do, it helps all the other parts grow, which I think is interesting. I love that the apostle Paul is making clear that church growth doesn't depend on the pastor preaching at the front. But church growth depends on all of the members of the body using the gifts that God has blessed them with, that he has so generously given. But here's the problem. Even though this is a beautiful biblical principle, as I was thinking about it, we live in a world that is kind of the opposite of this. Because we live in a society that 
can be summarized in one word, consumerism. We live in a world that lives with the idea that we try to get what is around us to benefit ourselves. We try to make the most out of the things around us to try to benefit ourselves. And I love what the late Tim Keller says about this. He says, sociologists, sociologists argue that in contemporary Western society, the marketplace has become so dominant that the consumer model increasingly characterizes most relationships. Today, we stay connected to people or things only as long as they meet our particular need at an acceptable cost to us. Isn't that such a piercing statement? We're only connected to things as long as they have an acceptable cost to us and when we benefit. When things cease to make a profit, that is when the relationship appears to require more love and affirmation from us than we are getting back, then we cut our losses and we break our relationship. To summarize, things are only important to us in our society when we can get something from them. And the moment that we can't get something from them, we cut our losses and we find something else. And this idea, this, this principle is not absent from our church. Oftentimes, church leaders talk about the 80-20 ratio, that 20% of people that come to church serve, but we have 80% of people that come to consume. What am I getting from this worship experience? What am I getting out of today? And I want to make clear, I want to be absolutely clear that there's nothing wrong about evaluating our church experience based on what we get and how we are spiritually filled. But if we evaluate our church experience based on only what we get and not what we are able to give out of the generous gifts that God has given us, then I think we miss the mark. I think we actually miss the mark of what it actually means to be part of the body. Because to be part of the body is to give just as much as we receive. To be part of a church community is to give just as much as we receive. I love... Um, this idea that consumer Christianity, it leads to a lack of spiritual lethargy, dissatisfaction, and a lack of fulfillment. And the reason why is because when we just consume and we never think about how we can give, then we're actually not living as God intended us to live. In Luke chapter six, Jesus gives us the answer. We often use this Bible verse to talk about our finances, but Jesus has so much more in store when we understand it. He says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount that you will give that determine the amount that you give back. See, the big, idea, the big idea that Jesus shares in this passage is that God uses what we give in our involvement and in our service and he returns it back to us exponentially. And this means that the degree of our involvement in our, in our faith and in our church life determines the satisfaction we will feel in those areas of life. I'll say it again. The degree in which we are involved in our faith life and our church life is the degree in which we can determine the satisfaction that we will find in these things. Why? Because we were created to give. We were created to give so that we can receive. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're feeling a lack of satisfaction. Maybe you're sitting here today, you're feeling a lack of satisfaction, a lack of fulfillment, that church isn't for you. And can I just submit an idea to you? Perhaps you need to serve. Perhaps you need to get involved in church life, in your faith life because that is what God has created us for. And that's what it means to be part of the body. At Kellyville, we want to encourage people to use their God-given gifts for His glory. And so today, we actually have something really fun that we want to share with you guys today. We want to share with you our service expo. Perhaps when you walked in, you saw all those tables outside with little um, you know, picture frames on it with things, but what we have outside in the foyer is our service expo. And we want to give you guys, every single one of you guys sitting here today, an opportunity 
to use your gifts to serve within our Kellyville Church context. We believe that there's so much more areas in life that you can serve, but we wanna give you and challenge you with an opportunity to serve here. There are so many different aspects of our church to get involved in. We have kids ministry, we need teen ministry help, connect groups, fellowship ministries, and there's even a table that Pastor Martin will be at. If you see that there is a need in our church that none of these areas meet, but you feel like you have something that you wanna give, we wanna encourage you. Let's figure out ways that we can help use the gifts that God has given you. That is gonna happen straight after church for around half an hour where, where we can just talk to the people, talk to the leaders in our church community to figure out ways that we can get involved. But here's why this is important. I was really blown away with Mon and what she had to share about the idea of generational blessings and generational involvement. And when I look at my son, some question, a question that I often ask as a pastor looking at my son is, is the church I'm a part of a church that he wants to be a part of? When he's 18 and he has his license and he has the opportunity to go wherever he wants in the world and he can do whatever he wants with his time, would he wanna be here on a Saturday morning? Would he wanna be a part of a church community that has loved him and that has blessed him his entire life. And as I think about the answer of how that could happen, parents, church, when our children see the generation above them loving being here, giving, not just consuming, getting involved, that is the biggest witness that we can give to them about the love of Jesus. That is the biggest witness. Something that has blown my mind being at Kellyville Church is when I look at the young adults and I look at the young professionals here, so many of the young adults and young professionals here are here because their parents serve. They're here because their parents are involved. And I've just learned from that 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 is the generational cycle that God intends for us to live. And that is how we make a church and be a church that makes a difference in the world. And so in closing today, as I invite the band up, church, let's not just be a community of consumers, but let's live, love, and serve like Jesus because of the way that Jesus has lived, loved, and served us. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. And I thank you so much, Father, for the theme of involvement. Because your kingdom is built upon people giving themselves to something bigger than themselves. And so we pray, Father in heaven, for your Holy Spirit to fall upon us. Lord, perhaps we're sitting here today and we've been involved for a very long time. And I pray for your blessing and favor. And I claim the promise that you speak, Jesus, in Luke 6, that you may bless them and return what they have given exponentially to them. And Father, perhaps we're sitting here today and we're unsure about this church thing. We're unsure about where we are able to give or whether this is really for us. And Father, I really just wanna uphold them to you. Lord, show them the gifts that you have given them Reveal to them the ways that you would love them to serve because when we serve others, we are serving you, Jesus. And that is how we show you love. Be with us now, Father, as we go out into connect groups and as we go out into our service expo. Lead us and guide us. In your name I pray, amen. Please stand with us and sing one more song. Free.
Worshiping. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Right now, you have an opportunity to take part in all of this. In the next few moments, we would like you to take part in the giving portion of today's service. If you're a visitor, sit back and relax. This is for our regulars. 
Today's giving is going forward to the local budget. So if you call Kellyville your home church this and you would like to get involved in helping with the running of our church, we invite you to use the directions on the screen or a cash box at the back of the church. Oh, that includes our time together this morning, but that's not all. Please join us after for some light refreshments. Um, and of course, make your way around the service expo. At 11.30, we'll break off into connect groups. And if you're a visitor and you would like to join in, please see the service table and they'll help you with where to go. Church, Church is out. out.